hello beautiful people listening to Arama. welcome to the channel today we're going to be checking this video and it's titled did the british invent and discover almost everything that's a question not quite okay interesting we're going to be checking this video yeah what they've got to say because this looks really interesting so yeah let's check it out did the romans sorry british ever do for us scientifically Nowadays, our education system regards the British as brutal colonists who enslaved populations, subjugated the world. Out of roughly 200 countries in the world today, the Brits colonised, settled or invaded about 90% of them. 90%? fairly impressive, or at least Indeed. I think the Romans would think it was impressive. Huh. But would we have been better off without those bastard Brits? Now, as it no. happens, they may have some redeeming features. If you look okay. at their scientific contribution, at least. Now, this is a slightly different video to normal, and I'm going to talk about the British scientific and technological achievements and inventions, even though I could mention trivial things like the British invention of some of the best countries in the world, like Australia, Canada, Singapore, New Zealand, America. Well... Maybe not invented, but they were certainly highly influenced. Influenced, mm -hmm. or even the only decent country in the Middle East, which is Israel, courtesy of Mr. Balfour, and many other countries that have a great deal to be proud of. Proud of such as Malaya, South Africa, Fiji, Kenya, Botswana, Sri Lanka, India—all wonderful British creations. But we're a science channel, and we're going to look at science. Now, the list is long. And it's the fact that people still don't give British credit for all of this, for, their, for what they've done. I mean, this alone speaks so much volume. And this is why people should respect them. Because it is not even easy for them to even stand alone to survive and still be in existence. Because, ah, how long ago? Imagine the countries, 90%, even my country, Nigeria too, who were colonized by British. And I mean, lots of, it's just because some people are ungrateful. That's just it. Of scientific achievements, and I'm only going to look at the really big ones and some of the more important ones. Let's start. Okay. Let's start with transport and engines. So the British invented the railways, steel Ooh. tracks, railway locomotives. In fact, wherever the British went, uh, railways followed. So they put in railways in Germany, India, South America, and of course, everybody copied that. Mm. Then we have the modern bicycle. Originally really? called the Rover Safety Bicycle, apparently. Okay. Chain drive, caster steering, and relatively small wheels invented by the Rover Company. In fact, in Poland, the world for bicycle is Rover. And oh. yes, it's the same company that Land makes Land Rovers. Oh, really? Now, the British obviously invented the first engines, which was the steam engine, and that broke us free from back-breaking animal and human-powered devices. Hmm. Now, while the British were inventing the steam engine, they, of course, had to invent the piston, and more importantly, the piston ring that seals the piston, a truly remarkable technological invention, which is even now being developed further and the piston and piston ring is the basis for petrol engines and diesel engines in fact oh every engine so no brits no engines Next. interesting i do not know none of this but it's a good thing we're checking a video like this to learn and to know about this do you know about this are you brits yourself do you know about this or you're just finding out let me know in the comment down below they invented the first uh, engine powered ships, obviously steam powered. Oh, ships, propellers, steel ships, the steam turbine, initially for powering ships, but now it powers the generators in every coal electricity generating plant and every nuclear uh, generating plant. So that's about 50% of all the electricity that's generated today, all courtesy of Mr. Parsons. Then we have the jet engine. Yes, the Germans independently invented it in the Second World War. 
the turboprop engine invented by the Brits, the first turboprop air aircraft. So if you don't fly on an airplane powered by a jet engine, which was largely due to the Brits, it's a turboprop airplane, which was invented by the Brits. Mm. And of course, the turboprop is the basis of the gas turbine, which is used to generate another 20% of the world's electricity. Yeah. We also have the modern car layer, front drive transverse engine independent suspension CV joints on the front wheels. Before that, companies tried all sorts of arrangements. So, for example, the Germans famously mm. had the engine and Wow, the I'm, back. I know this but car. Since 1959, most cars use the Mini Minor equivalent. Mm. Ever been on a vehicle that uses steel wheels? Pretty uncomfortable. But don't worry, the Brits invented the pneumatic tyre. Wow, I know that other car. I think they they used to call it Totes car. I can't remember, but I think that's the name. Let me know what you think. Well, what is actually the name of the car? But wow, I did not know about this invention. It's a good thing we're checking this video because, I mean, sometimes people try to undermine some past events or some things that have happened because they read history, the part that benefits or fits a certain narrative. But I love this and I love checking videos like this because you get to learn more and it opens your mind to learning about some things. Wow. So it looks like the British have invented pretty much everything that runs on the road. True. They didn't invent the road. That's just about it. Oh. Well, actually, they did. Tarmac Roads or Tarmacadam was invented by a Scot and a Welshman. Oh. And then we have Steel Bridges. And here's a very interesting one, the modern traffic roundabout in the 1960s. Now, you might think that roundabouts have been around since way before the 1960s, but the Brits had the inspired idea of changing the rules for the roundabout. In other words, yield to enter, which massively increases the efficiency of the uh, roundabout. Let me they invented roundabouts? Wow. And I know gas turbine. Um, where I'm from, my um, I'm from the Niger Delta in Nigeria. We, my state, by also states, before we switched to using the regular light that lots of people use, we used to use gas turbine, and the power supply there was really good. Well, it was really really good. So that's where I came about, came to learn about the gas turbine. Wow! 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 Yes. That sounds really interesting. Ooh. We have the cat's eye reflector. Uh, caterpillar tracks, which they, they did? invented just before they invented the tank. What? So what? there's much more we could talk about in terms of uh, transport technology, but we must move on to other industrial uh, te and technological stuff. Now, of course, Britain famously started the Industrial Revolution in the 18th and 19th century, and it's debated why it started in the United Kingdom, but clearly there was something special going on that made that spark. And of course, it started in the textile and agricultural industry. In the textiles, they invented the flying shuttle, powered looms, mm. the spinning mill for making threads. In fact, if you didn't have the Brits, you don't have the very fine modern clothing which we have now, which is really? also incredibly cheap compared with what it used to be. In the agricultural industries, uh, there are all sorts of me mechanical devices like the mechanical seed drill, the haymaking threshing machine, but also really important things like phosphate fertilizer production, selective breeding. But mm. that's just the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. If you're going to have an Industrial Revolution, you need to big build, big build buildings. And so the British gave us Portland cement, a revolutionary type oh. of cement. Where would we be without it? Then we have things mm. like steel boring machines, which led to the steel, uh, the modern lathe, which is ubiquitous in metal cutting. Hyper accurate machines for measuring things, the micrometer, for instance. Oh. You cannot have modern engineering unless you have hyper fine meth methods for measuring things. We have stainless steel, the production of polyethylene, mm. um, very famous pr practice, uh, plastic used in just about everything. The steel hammer for forging steel and making it much stronger. Wow. The Bessemer steel process, the first mass production of steel effectively. 
And then mm. the mass production of glass using the now ubiquitous virtually tin flotation method. All right, let's go a little bit electrical. So the first long distance communication cables were invented by the Brits, the coaxial cable. This was used for underwater cables to link the UK to America and other places. The first intercontinental communication, the birth of the internet in a sense. It was the first time that we could communicate all around the world. The telephone, wow. Alexander Graham Bell was a Scotsman. The television, mm. liquid crystal, cavity magnetron, You've never heard of the cavity. It's in your microwave, but probably more importantly, the first radars uh, to a large extent used the cavity magnetron, which was a revolution. Then if we go a little bit medical, we've got CAT scanners, ultrasound scanners. Oh. The first town to have chlorinated water. Mm. How about the first electronic programmable computer to crack uh, German codes in the Second World War? Accurate navigation using highly accurate clocks, the chronometers, and the first workable atomic clock. Then we have. This is interesting. Yo, I did not know none of this. Actually, I haven't. I actually sort of like thought to find out where or how all of this came about. I just went about just use it but yo uh, these these are interesting yo what the world wide web a gas stove tin really? cans and a really big one i know you've been wondering where i get to this one an alarm clock that makes tea oh again i could have added many many more things but let's mm. go on to fundamental science the stuff that all other science and technology actually depends upon. But before we do that, maybe just like and subscribe. How about the discovery of the proton, neutron, and electron? Oh. The three building blocks of, well, frankly, just about everything. Hmm. All discovered by Brits. And the Brits also discovered the opposite of matter, which is antimatter by Paul Dirac. And more recently, the last particle in the standard physics model of just about everything, the Higgs boson, which was proposed by Peter Biggs. Hmm. Now let's go a little bit bigger, but not a great deal bigger. The atom, the model of the atom with a hard nucleus with the electrons flying around was essentially discovered by the British. And I'm being a little bit loose there because there is a famous New Zealander involved with this. But frankly, oh. in those days, Kiwis were basically Brits. What about biology? Well, in my view, the two biggest advances in biology were both discovered by Brits. The first one is Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Okay, yeah. And then you have the discovery of the structure of DNA at Cam Cambridge University. Fundamental molecular biology of which the whole DNA revolution has been based on it. And yes, I know Watson was an, um, an American and Wilkins was a Kiwi. Anyway, of course, the discovery of the structure meant this explosion in growth of the, the whole DNA industry, effectively, such as DNA fin fingerprinting, now invented by the Brits. Now, let's go back to more basic, very fundamental, and possibly more important medicine. We have antiseptics, antibiotics, Vaccines, all three invented by Brits. Really? Let's go back to physics now. So we have Newton's laws of motion, Newton's laws of gravity. Mm -hmm. Where would we be without Sir Isaac Newton? We essentially couldn't predict anything. Back on. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on first. Now I have to like really pay close attention to some of these things. Wait, what? I only know some of them, like their names, but actually finding out their origin or where they're from. Really? What? This is an interesting find regardless. Let me know if you are great, if you knew about this. I mean, I, I, some people may not know about all of it, but I mean some of it. But at the same time, if you're 
if you also know about this let's say you're not bread but you know about this or you know about all of this or some of this let me know what you think in the comment down below so the physics the laws of optics and the way that radio waves travel light the laws of electromagnetic propagation in signals and wires scotsman james clark maxwell's you don't have any mobile phones or computers or communication cables without maxwell mm. and then we have electromagnetic induction from electromagnetic. michael faraday's if you don't understand magnetic induction there are no electric motors there's no electric generators. Basically, the whole backbone of the electricity system, you owe it to the Brits. Oh. Or in mathematics, and there are a lot here, so I'm going to pick the really big one, which is the invention of calculus, yes. There was another calculus. guy called Leibniz who also invented it at the same time, but essentially Newtonian uh, calculus is at the basis of a huge amount of advanced science of engineering. It's as fundamental as algebra and arithmetic. Now, this is, list is not complete. There are literally a zillion other things that, are, that the Brits have contributed to. Actually, there is just one more. The Flushing Loo. Now, obviously, much of what those British scientists did was based on other scientists from lots of other countries. And the Brits were just part of this magnificent thing which we call Western civilization. Of course, there were French and there were Germans and the the scientific development and advancement then spread to the United States and now to the Far East. But the contribution of the Brits were utterly fundamental on yes. so many levels. Yes. Now, without those advancements, our lives would be short, harsh, and frankly, just bloody horrible. The world's population would still be about 1 billion, which is what it was in about 1800, True. rather than roughly 8 billion that it is today without that wonderful science and technology. Mm -hmm. Now, if you add up all the bad things that the Brits may have done, you know, the Enritza massacre, the Bengal famine, and you, all the other bad things that happened, albeit only occasionally considering the attitudes of the times. But even if you add all those up, it's not a drop in the bucket compared with what has been achieved and the lives yes. we've saved. Thank you. How many lives, how many babies, children were saved by antibiotics and antiseptics, clean water, uh -huh. or the uses of electricity, communications and transport. Famines yeah. are effectively a thing of the past because, uh -huh. well, for one reason, we can ship food around from one place to another. To another, easily. Very, very easily. Now, look, it turns out that I was born in England and even though I'm an Aussie, so I am biased. But I don't think it makes sense <laughs> to be proud of what your ancestor did or were unless you, there's some evidence that you carry on those ideas, values, and traditions. But even if you don't measure up to those ancestors or other people's ancestors, it's just bad form not to appreciate what those people did for us. Thank you. The contribution of the Brits was truly incredible, and we should all be grateful that they came along. Thank you, sir. More than virtually any other group to pull humanity out of the appalling, difficult lives that existed before the 1800s. Uh. So, do you think the ledger for those bastard Brits, is it positive or negative? Wow, I did not know none of this. Or maybe I knew their names, but I forgot to check their nationality or where they're from. That aside. But let's look at this, regardless of how it is. History. I always say people should learn history and learn it for good. Because people always paint and fine-tune history and share the side or the narrative that benefits them, regardless of how anybody wants to see it and say, oh, Britain is bad or whatever, and want to paint the, the bad things they've done to outshine the good things. Remember, history. With history, everybody hurt everybody. And if we're going to be counting the bad deeds, we will not be here today. Because everybody will be offended by what somebody did. But regardless, I am so grateful that somebody shared this and we got to learn about this. And remember that regardless of how people want to paint it, the world today, talk about civilization, Britain, and they should be proud. That's why sometimes when I see 
British people and they feel guilty for something, I'd be like, why? Yeah? Because if I were to be British, see, listen, I will be proud. Forget it. Because uh, even us as human beings, there are some people that will paint us or see us to be good people. And there are some people that will say, oh, you're a terrible person or bad person. You know, if you do good finish, somebody will still find fault out of something. So let's not forget it. So as a British person, or if you're a Brit, you should be proud of your ancestors, of the good things that your ancestors did. Don't stop letting people to guilt trick you. Uh-uh, calm down. Calm down. But well, this was interesting though, an interesting watch, an interesting find regardless. Let me know what you think. I'm sure tons of people have interesting things to share. I would really love to share that. You can share other useful information you think might be really helpful. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and all of that stuff. And until next time, see you in the next video.